Hello, Christ family. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>
We celebrate today the gift that God has given us as mothers as we've opened the service, thanking God for that gift. And we also thank God for the gift of salvation, the love he has poured out on us through his son, Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice and be glad. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we enter into your presence, humbling ourselves and acknowledging that you are the God of love, grace, and mercy that has freely, freely been poured out upon us as you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, as the gift. Lord, we accept that gift. We also thank you for the gift of mothers who have nurtured us and cared for us and taught us how to love as you have loved. And so, Lord, may we continue to love others as you have loved us. May we continue to rejoice in the gift that you have given us and share with joy our salvation. In your name we pray, amen. Continue to join us as we worship God in song. become my salvation. Oh 
something special that just you and one or maybe two other friends had. Maybe it was like a best friend's necklace or a bracelet with two pieces of a heart that only fit together when, it was, when you were together. Or maybe you've made a friendship bracelet for one of your friends out of string or embroidery floss. Those are great ways to help you remember to think about someone special, even if they're not right next to you. Grown-ups have things like this too. Is that kind of weird? My friends from college and I each have a chipmunk. This one is mine to help us remember how special we are to each other. When we talk to each other through the computer every Sunday night, we all get out our chipmunks and they hang out with us while we talk. It's a little bit silly, but kind of fun, too. Also, when grown-ups love each other a lot and get married, they'll often wear rings to remember and show each other how much they love each other. Today, we're talking about a big word, and that word is irresistible grace. This is kind of a fancy way of talking about the way that God loves us even before and beyond the time we knew about God enough to love him. God's love for us is even better than the way our friends love us or even how a mommy and daddy love each other or love us because God gave up everything for us even before we loved him back. As you show your mommy or other important women in your life how much you love them this Mother's Day, Remember that God loves you even more than you could possibly imagine loving someone. God doesn't need a fun necklace or a friendship bracelet or even a chipmunk to remember how much to remember how much he loves you because it is always true. Let's pray together. 
Dear God, thank you for loving us even before we could imagine knowing you. We know we do not deserve your gracious love, yet we honor you and praise you for your goodness. Please help us to show your love to the people around us. And all God's children say, Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you, Heather. It's always a joy to have you participating with us in worship, and uh, I'm sure the uh, young ones enjoy hearing your message. Let's turn now to God's Word from Romans chapter 8. We're going to be reading verses 28 to 39. Romans chapter 8, 28 through 39. Also encourage you, if you've got the email to pull out the outline as we go through today's message. and You can follow along there and take some notes. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he may be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons... Neither the present nor the future, nor any power, neither height nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Here ends the reading of God's holy and inspired word. As we call, Lord, as we talking about irresistible charm. This is in the midst of a series on sin and salvation. We looked at how we've been orphaned children because of our sinful nature. But God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, and how we've become adopted into the family. We looked in the message on predestination about dating and how God passionately, actively pursues us in love. 
And we're going to look more at the dating aspect today as we look at sin and salvation and God's irresistible charm or grace. God's grace and his love go hand in hand. You cannot talk about salvation without talking about love, without talking about God's grace. And so we, we look today at how you cannot separate that and how it works to be part of God's plan of salvation. So we're going to look at dating and relate that to God's plan of salvation. Where does the dating process begin? Well, it's the first meeting, it's the introduction. It's possibly at the college library or the cafeteria, maybe at a high school dance, could be at a youth group outing, or maybe some friend says, I have a friend that you should meet. And so you, you meet a person and there's an introduction. My name is so-and-so and you find out a little bit about them. And that's where it begins, the dating stage first begins with an introduction stage. And so that's the first point this morning. The first stage of salvation is introduction and friend stage. Somebody or somehow you are introduced to Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Well, it's a name. What more beyond the name? And you start to, to find out more and more about Jesus just as you become more and more acquainted with the friend. In the friend stage, you start to ask questions. You know, where did you grow up? How many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, what do you like to eat? What do you like to do for entertainment? And in that stage, we start to find out who is Jesus? What do we know about Jesus? And the interesting thing is we, as we discover about friends and we research them, they have a lot of knowledge, we have all the information we need about Jesus in the Bible. It tells us all we need to know to be introduced and become friends with Jesus Christ. And so it begins by, by, by reading and studying God's word. Now, the next stage in dating is you kind of get to know one another, you introduce yourself, and you become friends. And then you move to the more serious stage where we're dating. We're dating, and it's exclusive, and, and we're going to go out, and we're going to do things, and we're dating. You get introduced to Jesus Christ. And you start reading about Jesus Christ. What is Jesus like? What did he do? And then there's that dating stage where it's, you get hungry for it. You want to know and you want to spend more time. You want to spend time in the word daily. You want to be reading God's word. And you want to be in prayer so that you know everything you can and spend as much time as you can with Jesus. And so the first stage is introduction and being a friend, committing time to one another. Now, the second stage, and this takes some time, hopefully, the second stage in dating is engagement and marriage. And the second stage in salvation is engagement and marriage. You decide you like each other, you you develop this love for each other, and you want to be engaged, you want to be married, you want to make a covenant commitment to one another. In the church, this is where people stand up and they profess their faith. They profess their faith in Jesus Christ before the, the body, the leaders in the church, before the church, and they say, I am a sinner saved by grace. I make profession of faith that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. 
and I want to commit to live for him from now on. And so it's the covenant part of our relationship. Now, the last stage in dating is celebrating anniversaries. Celebrating anniversaries. This year, uh, Mary and I are going to celebrate 30 years of, of marriage, and it's, it's been an exciting time. It's been a blessing to walk through life with one another. It's been a true blessing to, 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 to share in, in God's love. And as we go through life, we, we experience what a, what a joy it is to experience living in a loving relationship with Jesus Christ. And we celebrate every day how we have the opportunity to live with Jesus and for Jesus. And as we look at, at marriage and we celebrate some of those events, like 30 years, there's some people in our congregation who, who have been married like 50 years, 60, close to 70 years. And we look at those people and we say, they know what a marriage is about and they've endured. And they love the Lord and they love each other. They've been through thick and thin. And so not only do they, they love and are an example of God and the love of Jesus Christ to one another, they're an example to all of us who follow in their footsteps and say, wow, after all these years, they have such a love and a commitment to one another. And so you see, as we go through the stages, we have a commitment to, to, to Jesus to live every day of our life for him. It's a lifelong commitment. And now I want to break down the steps and bring them in line with what Paul is talking about. In verse 28, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Continuing on, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers, and those he predestined, he also called. This is, this is, the, this is the first stage. This is step one. This is the introductory stage. It's the next point. The introductory stage to Jesus is both external and internal. External is the hearing, the hearing the name of Jesus, the hearing about Jesus. One of the greatest men to ever present this message was Billy Graham. Billy Graham is the ambassador for the external call. He would preach in stadiums, he would preach around the world to people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people and he would share the good news of the gospel and then invite people to respond to that. And that was the external call that he made to people. And so we hear the name of Jesus. We have to tell people about Jesus, who he is, what he means to us. And then we have the inward call. The inward call is the working of the Holy Spirit on our life. In the dating process, that's where you get butterflies in your stomach. That's where you come up to the guy or the girl and your heart is racing and your palms are sweating and your tongue is tied and you're like bumbling over yourself. This is the, the point in which you are realizing that there, there, there's somebody special, somebody wanna, I want to have a, a relationship with. I've been introduced to Jesus Christ, and, and Jesus Christ is the working of the Holy Spirit within me, warms my heart. I, I get this feeling that I want to know more. I want to spend more time with Jesus Christ. From a guy's perspective, this is where you look at the girl and go, Wow, is she hot, and I never noticed it. 
And that's what it is. It's like, wow, this Jesus Christ is something, and, and I've been oblivious to it, and, and, and now it's, it's, it's just warming my heart, and, and I've never noticed before. We are different inside because we're battling our sinful nature. Our sinful nature that kept us in our orphan state. And now we're part of the adoption process. We enter into the friendship stage where we have a new interest in a guy or a girl and we change the way we treat the girl or guy because we've started down a relationship road. When Jesus Christ comes into our heart, when we hear the external call, when we feel and recognize what's happening internally, we want to spend more and more time with Jesus. We want to spend more and more time in his word and getting to know him. And we want to spend more and more time with brothers and sisters We become good friends. But we become more than good friends because God calls us to be in a relationship with God, with him, and he calls us to be adopted. We talked about that a few weeks ago, about being adopted, where we receive a, a new name and a new home. We are now called Christians, and we have an eternal home. But look at verse 29. For those God knew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. As we learn more and more about Jesus Christ, we become more like him. And it says that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So as we get to become adopted, as we get to know Jesus Christ and become part of the, the family, we become brothers and sisters in Christ. But we become brothers and sisters with Christ. Christ is our firstborn brother, given to us by, by God expressing his love. So we become adopted Become like our firstborn brother. And then the dating process, we decide that we want to make a commitment and marry this guy or girl and devote the rest of our life to them. So we're called. We hear the eternal, external call, the internal call. It's the introduction phase. And then the next he says, he also justifies. An easy way to remember the word justify is what it means. It's just as if we had never sinned. Now, we still sin. We still have our sinful nature. But God looks at us through the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. And he looks at us just as if we had never sinned. Because he sees the blood of Christ covering over our sins and atoning for our sins. So the marriage stage, the next point, the marriage stage is being justified and living in a covenant relationship with Jesus. In a marriage, you make a covenant. And you make a promise. I promise to be your wedded husband. I promise to be your wedded wife. I promise to be an adopted child of God. I promise to be a Christian who lives to my fullest extent as a child of God. Now the last step in marriage is the anniversary step. That's where over the years the spouse tried to make us become the best person we be can become. Some people look at saying, saying, boy, they've got a long road to go and that, that spouse has got a lot of work to do. And for some of us, that's true. There's a lot of work to be done. But the next point is that in the anniversary stage is where we live a life of glorifying Jesus glorifying Jesus and seek to be glorified. He called us. 
He justifies us. And he also glorifies us. The glorification stage is where we become a new person. We become different. We get married and we make this commitment. But over the years, you may have heard people say, you know, when they're talking, the spouses and the people celebrating anniversaries, they're finishing each other's sentences. And how does that happen? Because they live so long together and they love each other and they've come in together and they just know each other. And that's the way it needs to be with us and God. We are glorified in that we behave, we seek to behave differently than those who live in this world. And when our time on this earth is done, we become a new creation. We receive a, a, a new body that is complete and glorified. Now the last part of the process goes back to the beginning. The whole process of salvation, where does it begin? God loving us and giving his son for us and all the things we need for his salvation. Look at verse 37 through 39. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. God loved us. He put his irresistible grace out there for us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It all begins with God's irresistible grace and love, which nothing, nothing can separate us from. We're going to talk more about that next week. But on this Mother's Day, as we celebrate a mother's love, we also want to celebrate God's love and grace for us. He's calling your name. Here today, Jesus, call. He wants to love you. He sent his son to die for you. And he wants to have a lifelong and eternal lasting relationship with you. Here is call. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and just thank you for the opportunity to uh, be in your word, to get some time to build a relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, that you have graciously given your son, Jesus Christ, so that we can be adopted children, so we can be brought into the family. We can be one with you and one with each other. Lord, I thank you for uh, brothers and sisters in Christ who help would come around us and provide for us, who walk with us, who care for us. Lord, in this time when we are dealing with this pandemic and change in our life, let us see the consistency. Let this be the opportunity in the midst of all the, uh, the, the negative and all the things that are happening and all the fear. Let us bring hope by introducing people to Jesus. May the name of Jesus Christ be what's on the lips, the hearts, and the minds of people. Lord, we, we, we thank you that you provide for us. Um, some may be wondering where, where things are coming, what's going to happen next, and how, you know, what does the future hold? But right now, in this moment, we want to give you thanks for this day. For, this, for life, for what you provide for us, that we can have uh, nourishment, that we can have health, that we can have your love. And so, Lord, continue to shower down upon us your love. Help us to see, not only today, but tomorrow and eternity, that you are with us and guiding and directing, that you have a plan laid out. We thank you that you have called us, that you have justified us, and that you are in the process of glorifying us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, 
We come to you from all walks of life, from all situations, and we know you hear us. You hear us, you love us, you care for us, and you grant us what we stand in need of. So Lord, now hear us as we join together in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join in singing, Only a Sinner Saved by Grace. day and he is going to play for us.
upon the gifts of, that they were given and shared. What a, what a special, special gift um, John has, has given, not only to his, his mother, to all of us. Um, John and I have something in common. John was adopted, as we talk about orphan children and being adopted. He can relate to being adopted and giving a new name and a new family. And so as we share in Mother's Day, it's a special gift that he gives, not only to his parents, but all of us as we are adopted as brothers and sisters in Christ. So thank you very much, John. Receive now the closing blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen.